We've really gotten to understand now what these charges are. But can you give us a sense of what you think the special counsel is after? There's now a third indictment. Potentially one of these individuals could flip on the former president and even offer up more evidence? Yes, good to be with you, Anne-Marie. This is all about obstruction, and obstruction is really dangerous for the former president. First, it's its own crime that's really serious. You could get up to 20 years in prison. I mean, that's as uh, high amount of years as anything that Trump will be charged with for anything, really. And then on top of that, obstruction could lead to other convictions because obstruction shows consciousness of guilt. So if you can show a jury that Trump wanted the video of the surveillance cameras destroyed, then that shows that Trump knew what he was doing was wrong and wanted to cover up uh, the guilt. And so that could lead to another conviction for espionage, uh, for mishandling of documents and so forth. And that's why obstruction is so dangerous. Not only is it its own crime, but it could lead to convictions for other crimes as well. Yeah, we spoke earlier today with Nick Ackerman, former Watergate prosecutor, who's having a massive case of deja vu right now. We talk about <laughs> deleting security tape and so forth. I just wonder, if you can put this in perspective, I realize the timing might seem a bit odd to some folks, but as we add these additional pieces to the puzzle, does it strengthen the special counsel's case? It definitely does. And Jack Smith had to decide whether to strengthen his case at the risk of postponing it beyond the election. And he did. He decided, like, I will take the strongest case possible with the risk that with another defendant, it adds more complexity and a possibility of greater delays. So I think what Jack Smith is doing is just say, we're going to throw it all into this case because we've got all this evidence. And the Trump people at Mar-a-Lago are so bad at this, Joe. I mean, they were communicating <laughs> with each other with sh with hush emojis. <laughs> yes. I mean, this like amateur hour. They met in know? the bushes, Dave. They met in the bushes and they're talking about the boss once. And, you know, we got to talk about your loyalty. Uh, they might as well have been meeting in the bada bing. I mean, it looks so <laughs> bad for these guys. Yeah, I was concerned about maybe the emojis. That does seem like they were trying to be very cloak and daggers and just didn't do a good job of it. Uh, and according to this indictment, of course, um, do we potentially or do, do you expect that there will be more charges still attached to that documents case? I mean, for us in Washington, D.C., yesterday, people were talking about waiting for, because Trump lawyers were at the DOJ, waiting for a third indictment about January 6th and about overturning the election results. But then we got news of more charges on, a, on the prior indictment on documents. Do you just expect this to just keep rolling on, more charges as more evidence comes forward? Very possible, Anne-Marie. So under the Espionage Act, 18 U.S.C. 793E, there are two parts of it that could really hurt Trump. One is the uh, the intentional, willful possession of these classified documents. You can't possess these documents when you don't have the right to do so. He's being charged many times for that. But then there's another part of that statute, and that is for the dissemination of the document. That document he held up at Bentminster over the uh, Iran plans, where he said, I can't show this to you, but here it is. <laughs> that would violate a different part of that section. Now, right now, Trump's only being charged with the willful uh, possession of the documents, not for the dissemination of the documents. But we could see future charges for the dissemination of the documents. And that's where I think Jack Smith could go next. And if he wanted to go there, it could be filed in Bedminster, New Jersey, where it's a blue state as compared to South Florida in a red area. So let's start looking forward a little bit here, Dave, to a potential next indictment. All this stuff dropped yesterday while we were waiting for what we thought might be the special counsel's next case uh, on January 6th. I realize that could come at any time, but we've also got Fulton County, Georgia. Are you, are you still expecting that to drop in the middle of August? Yes, I think Fonnie Willis, my counterpart up there in Fulton County, deliberately gave the feds a very long runway so they could then take off with their indictments. And so I expect the next indictment will be over January 6th by the feds, mm -hmm. and then it'll be followed by the Fulton County indictments in Georgia. 
I actually think, Joe, that the trial over the January 6th stuff will happen before the documents trial. Because when it comes to January 6th, you don't have these issues of classified documents and SEPA, this federal law that's involved, and the need to get clearances for your lawyers. Okay. And also, in January 6th, it's going to be up in Washington, D.C. You've got experienced judges who are used to these cases. They've had hundreds of these types of cases already in front of them. And so I think they're going to expedite it up there. And I think the case in South Florida over the documents will take longer. I think it'll go after the election. And then in Fulton County, it's hard to read because that's a state matter in Georgia. So it's hard to know when that one will go. Oh, fascinating. Out of all of these charges, Dave, which one is going to be uh, the most difficult for the president to fight? I rank the Mar-a-Lago documents case, the strongest case for prosecutors. They've got Trump dead to rights. I mean, they've got a direct tie between Trump and the alleged criminality. They've got the obstruction, which shows consciousness of guilt and, as I said earlier, is its own standalone statute. Uh, the, the benefit for Trump, though, is that it's going to be held in South Florida, which is a better jury pool for him. Hmm. It's going to be with a jury pool of, of people from four red counties and a fifth county that's a swing county. In D.C. for January 6th, it's going to be a very blue jury pool. Do you know that Trump only got 5% of the vote up near you in Washington, D.C.? That's a jury pool <laughs> for the January 6th case. And it'll be a judge. He's not going to put up with any guff. In South Florida, Trump's got a, a judge who he appointed who's new at this and who's had good rulings from him in the past. So I think the strongest case on the facts, Mar-a-Lago documents, but the strongest jury pool for prosecutors will be in Washington, D.C. <laughs> over the January 6th matter. You know, we call it the January 6th investigation, Dave, but we understand it's entirely likely that there may not be charges tied to the actions of that day. Rather, the president, the former president's attempts to overturn the results of the election, uh, seizing voting machines, pressuring Mike Pence, f slates of fake electors. Is that what you expect or will there be action on the attack on the Capitol? It's a great point. I say January 6th, but it really is, is attempts to overturn the election. I think it'll be his involvement with the fake elector scheme, if they can tie him to that. It'll be with trying to convince Mike Pence not to certify the votes. That could be obstruction of an official proceeding. You've got perhaps conspiracy to defraud the United States. And you've got this other statute, deprivation of rights, where you try to prevent people from having their, their votes counted. Mm -hmm. All those things occurred around January 6th, but it's not directly tied to the violence on that day. I do not think he will be charged with incitement of a riot or anything else involving the actual violence on January 6th. I think it's too hard to do as a prosecutor and people like Donald Trump and everyone else in this country have broad First Amendment rights.